how to host an ebook and other digital products and share them using DigitalOcean Spaces. As you can see, on my desktop, I have a PDF file called Lorem Epsom. I'm just going to double click on this PDF file to open it in a PDF viewer, just to show you what it currently looks like. As you can see, it's a two page document with Lorem Epsom text. This PDF file is the ebook I'm going to be uploading to DigitalOcean Spaces to share it with my clients and customers. Of course, this is just a video demonstration, so the PDF file just has placeholder Lorem Epsom text. Now that I've showed you the PDF file, that is going to be today's ebook for this video demonstration, I'm just going to quickly close out of it to be taken back to my desktop. The next thing we're going to need to do is open up our browser and navigate to the following URL address. This URL address is my referral link. It will give you $200 in free DigitalOcean cloud credits to try out DigitalOcean servers free for 60 days. This free trial credit is only available for new DigitalOcean customers. So to create a DigitalOcean free account, you just need to enter your email address and a password or use your Google account or GitHub account to sign up. Once you've signed up for your DigitalOcean account, just click on sign in. You'll then be signed into your DigitalOcean account and taken to your DigitalOcean dashboard. Once here, if you look to the left hand side, you'll see your project name, which in my case is called Websplaining. But for today's video, I've also made a second project called Tutorials, which is currently a blank project, which will mimic what you'll see as a brand new user to DigitalOcean. So I'm just going to click on this project to select it. Now you won't have two DigitalOcean projects, you'll only have one. This is most likely what you'll see when your DigitalOcean project contains no DigitalOcean services. So as you can see, I'm greeted with a little welcome message here. Next, we'll need to create a DigitalOcean space. To do this, navigate to the top right, to the green Create button and click on it. Once you've done that, look for where it says Spaces. Spaces is one of DigitalOcean services that lets you store and serve static assets. Now, of course, your ebook is a static digital asset. So this is the perfect DigitalOcean service for an ebook. Click on Spaces to select this DigitalOcean service. Once you've done that, at the very top, you'll see Create a Spaces Bucket. We'll first need to choose a data center region for our Spaces Bucket. You have a couple of options here. You have New York, Amsterdam, Singapore, Sydney, and additional data centers, which you can click on the arrow here to see them. I'm going to be going with the New York data center, which is already pre-selected. If it's not, just click on it once to select it. Scroll down until you see where it says content delivery network. Now CDN delivers web assets up to 70% faster with global edge caching technology. No additional cost to you. Standard bandwidth fees apply. That sounds great. Our web assets will be delivered 70% faster. So I'm going to enable CDN. So I'm just going to click on this box here. You're then greeted with a little message which says, no, you can assign a custom domain in CDN settings after the spaces bucket is created. So that's good to know. So if you want to use your domain name, for example, websplaining.com, you can assign this in the CDN settings after. I'll most likely show you how to point your domain name in another video in future. Underneath that, it says finalize and create choose a unique spaces bucket name. Names must be lowercase. They can be between three and 63 characters long and may contain dashes. So I'm just going to click on this box and I'm going to give my spaces bucket a name here. So I'm going to call it tech dash ebooks. Underneath that, we can see our spaces bucket origin URL address, which is HTTPS colon slash slash tech dash ebooks dot NYC three, which is the data center that we selected dot digital ocean spaces dot com. So that's the current URL address to the spaces bucket. Scroll down further until you see where it says select a project. As you can see, the web splitting project is already pre-selected for me. I have two projects and I'm going to be going with the other one. So I'm just going to click on this arrow and I'm going to select tutorials. Most likely you only have one project, so you won't need to fiddle around selecting a project. Now, before I click on create spaces bucket, I just want to scroll up to the top again, just to show you exactly what you're getting when you go with the digital ocean spaces service. So digital ocean spaces says it's a simple, scalable object storage. Leave the complexity of resource name administration to us. You can focus on building great apps. So you got predictable pricing built in CDN, which we have selected to use, unlimited spaces buckets and uploads, use your own custom subdomain, and it's easy to integrate S3 compatibility. So that's what you're getting. So I'm just going to scroll all the way back down to the bottom. So as you can see, there's a little box here which says spaces subscription. It's currently active. If we go with the creation of the spaces bucket, we get the ability to create 100 buckets as part of your $5 a month subscription overage fees apply. So that's good to know that you can create up to 100 buckets. All that's left to do now is to click on create a spaces bucket. DigitalOcean will then begin creating your spaces bucket. So I'll be back with you once our spaces bucket has been created. All right, I'm back. Our spaces bucket called tech ebooks has been created in the tutorials project. There's our origin endpoint URL address, which we can click on the copy symbol here to copy it if we want. To the right hand side, we've got a settings tab. 
where we can edit the file listings, the CDN or content delivery network, the CORS configurations or cores configurations, and we can delete the spaces bucket if we no longer need it. So those are some additional settings which you might find useful. I'm going to go back to the files tab here and I'm just going to click on the X on this message as it's just a bit distracting and then go to scroll down just a bit. In our tech ebook spaces, we have the ability to drag and drop files to upload them or we can simply click on upload or create a folder. Now before I upload our ebook, I'm actually Actually going to organize myself first. So I'm going to create a folder first by clicking on create folder. For the folder name, I'm going to call it PDF. So I'm just going to type PDF in here. I'm going to be grouping all the PDF ebooks into this tech ebook space. Once you've chosen a new folder name, just click on save. Now I've got a folder within my digital ocean space called PDF. To the right hand side, there's three horizontal dots, which you can click on where you can see additional options. Now for me, what I'm going to do is just click on the PDF name once to go into that folder. So if you look here, you can see the current file path that we're in. Again, I'm just going to delete this annoying message here. In this PDF folder, we're now going to upload our digital product. So to do this, I'm just going to click on upload. Once you've clicked on upload, you'll need to locate your ebook or digital product. For me, my ebook is in my desktop, which I'm currently viewing in this file explorer, and my file is called Lorem Epson. So I'm just going to click on it once to select it, and then I'm going to click on open. A small window will open where you'll need to select the file permissions. By default, private is pre-selected, which means nobody can see this file. If you click on public, which is what I'm going to go with, then everybody will be able to see this file. Once they've been shared the Link. Next, all you need to do is click on upload. The Lorem Epson PDF has now been uploaded to the PDF folder in the tech ebooks digital ocean space. To share this ebook, just hover over it and then click on the copy symbol next to its URL address to copy this URL. Now all you need to do is share this URL address with somebody that you need to give it to. I'm just going to open up another tab here, an incognito window, just to show you what exactly the guest will see when they click on this link. So as you can see at the very top, the link that they click on is exactly the same link that they'll see at the top of their URL address bar and underneath the ebook will open up in my case in a PDF viewer on their browser. So as you can see, we're currently on page one of two. It's a two page document and it's exactly the same as the PDF file that I uploaded. So that's what the guest viewer will see when they click on the Digital Ocean Space link. For further options, you can hover over your ebook, navigate to the right hand side and click on the three horizontal dots. You'll then be greeted with a couple of options here. So the first one is to manage your permissions, which basically means to change it either to private or change it to public if you have it on private. You can manage your metadata you can rename it, you can move it to another project or space, you can purge from CDN cache, you can quick share, you can copy endpoints, you can download your own file again if you want, and you can delete the file too. Now I'm just going to quickly go over quick share as I think this one is important to know. So I'm just going to click on quick share here. So quick share basically allows you to share the URL with anyone and they will be able to view your file even if it's set to private read. So it's important to know that guys, if you use the quick share option and it's set to private read, they can still view it if they have the link from QuickShare. Updating the sharing duration will generate a new URL below. So if you want a timed share link underneath where it says share duration, you can select one of these options from one hour all the way to seven days. And then you'll get a new link below. The top link is path style file URL. And underneath that is virtual hosted style file URL. So currently it's set to one hour sharing duration, but if I click on six hours, it will load new URLs same again for one day, same again for three days, and so on. So again, all you would need to do is click on the copy button for either of these two links and share them to the person that you would like to share them with. All right, guys, so that's pretty much everything I wanted to go over for Digital Ocean Spaces. So that's how you can host an ebook and other digital products and share them using Digital Ocean Spaces. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a like, comment down below, and most importantly of all, subscribe to support the channel. I'll see you on the next video. Is it so hard to let it go?